Have you ever tried making your own jalapeno cheese crisps? Let me show you how I made these. You're gonna start by chopping your jalapenos. Get thick slices of sharp cheddar and cut in fours. Place onto your baking sheet lined with parchment. Bread your cheese so they don't stick together and top with your jalapeno. Now bake for eight to 10 minutes at 350 degrees. This is what they're gonna look like. They're perfect, crispy, crunchy, and homemade. Once you try these, you're never gonna buy store-bought again. Use them with your favorite dip or as a crunchy snack. What's up guys? Just wanted to show you another one of my favorite condiments. Uh, caramelized onions are all well and good. They're delicious. I make them every time I make tacos or burgers, but this takes it just one step further. We're going to start off by sauteing our sliced red onions in some duck fat, but you can use butter as well. Then we're going to drain our crispy bacon or pancetta. It can use the extra grease because this is a lot of onions. Next, we're going to add some ancho chili powder, some chipotle chili powder, and some Sichuan chili flake. Next, we're gonna break out the good old Jim Beam Kentucky bourbon, add a half to three quarters of a cup. No need to flambe this, it's a long cook time so the alcohol will cook out. Then we're gonna add plenty of aged balsamic, some brown sugar, add back in our pancetta, and really let these onions get nice and caramelized. And there you have it, bourbon bacon onion jam, the ultimate condiment for your next burger cookout. So you know that one dish that everybody loves so much but you almost don't even want to share the recipe because it's so easy, it's embarrassing? Well for me that's this key lime pie. Six ingredients only, three for the crust, three for the filling. So the first tip I'm going to give you is to use these Lotus Biscoff cookies in place of regular graham crackers. That's because not only are they way more delicious because they're speckles cookies but they're vegan too. They make a great snack. Follow up with one third cup of sugar and then we're going to go ahead and melt exactly six tablespoons of butter before we pour that in. Mix it up nice and good and pour out your favorite pie shell because you're going to make your pie. Pour that in the oven for 375 at 7 minutes. Now time for the filling. For condensed milk, I'm going to use lechera because I have good taste. Toss in three entire eggs and move on to your key lime. Okay, so here's a secret. I don't have key limes, but regular limes will do. Half a cup, some extra zest for flavor. Mix it just until combined. You don't want to add too much air into your batter. Pour that into your beautiful and now cold pie shell before throwing it in the oven for 350 degrees this time. 30 minutes exactly. Okay, the cookie might be the best thing I've ever made. Seriously, I had no words. So grab melted butter, sugar, and brown sugar, and give that a stir. Add your egg and vanilla essence and give it another stir. Then add flour, salt, and baking soda, and just gently fold that in before folding in your dark chocolate chunks. So you don't have to chill the dough, you can just scoop it directly into your skillet and bake for 23 minutes, top with ice cream, and that's it. If you're looking for a low carb, dairy free, and vegan recipe to make for weekend brunch, try this keto blueberry crumble. To make it to a mixing bowl, add monk fruit sweetener, coconut flour, chia seeds, ground flax seeds, cream of tartar, baking soda, and salt, and whisk that all together. Add melted coconut oil and a vanilla extract, and then using an electric mixer, mix that all together until fully incorporated before folding in some fresh blueberries. Spoon that mixture into eight four ounce ramekins, then flatten the mixture into an even layer. Place the ramekins atop a baking sheet, and then create a water bath by pouring enough water to fill up about one inch of the bottom of the baking sheet. Transfer the baking sheet to the oven and bake at 350 degrees until the edges of the crumble are golden brown, which should take about 40 minutes. Serve with spoons and enjoy. Okay, y'all, I wanted to show you something that I do instead of boiling eggs when I need to make egg salad or potato salad or macaroni salad. I do not boil eggs. I make what's called an egg loaf. So I crack all my eggs in this little dish whole. I do not scramble them. And um, I make sure my, go uh, my bowl is greased. And I put it in my pressure cooker. Now, I put mine in for 10 minutes because I do like my eggs extra cooked, I could say, or well done. Um, eight minutes is about perfect. You won't have any of the green on the outside. Um, but like I said, I do like my eggs well done. Um, this will save you a whole lot of time. Here's the egg loaf, and all we'll do is pop this out and chop it up and add it to whatever we need. It's time we make a lamb rack. Now let's go! We'll separate this little chain first with our fingers, then just remove with a knife, remove this silver skin, can trim a little of that fat to expose that soft fat. Now just douse it in this amazing spice mixture I have posted in the comments. Dip and flip and dip and press and dip and flip and press. Medium heat pan, a little bit of avocado oil. Lamb goes in, fat side down. After about five minutes, Sear that top edge a little bit, then layer flat. Now into a 400 degree oven, 10 minutes. Now remove, five minutes. Now back in the oven, six, seven minutes. Finally back out and rest for 10 minutes. 
brush with your favorite mustard. Now we're just gonna roll this fresh cut chives. Bada boom. Just pick it up and forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. Oh my God. It's so delicious I wanna cuss, but we're a family channel. You know I love you and I'm out. Would you believe me if I told you these tenders are made out of oyster mushrooms? They're soy free, gluten free, and most nut free. Bro, no so way. let's make them. <laughs> so I'm going to cut my oyster mushrooms into four big chunks, and then we're going to season with some coconut amino acids. You could also use soy sauce if you're not soy free. Some vegan chicken with seasoning salt, some spicy brown mustard, some onion powder, garlic powder, and nutritional yeast. And then I'm also going to pour some veggie broth in there. After it's been marinating for about 10 minutes, I'm going to put it in some flour panko with some seasonings and then dip that into a plain oat milk with some apple cider vinegar to make it more like a buttermilk. Once it's coated twice, I'm going to put it in some oil and fry it and then flip them over when they're golden brown and enjoy with your favorite sauce. These are so good. I hope so you guys good. try them. You will never buy another pizza again because of this recipe. And they're keto friendly if that's what you're into. First things first, preheat your oven to 350. Combine one bag of mozzarella and one bag of Parmesan cheese. Then add salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and a lot of oregano. Then mix it all up. Grab your favorite cooking spray, I'm using olive oil, and spray down a muffin tin. Grab your cheese mixture and fill about one fourth of the muffin tin. Then you can choose whatever toppings you want. I'm using turkey pepperoni. Add your toppings however you'd like and pop it in the oven for around 10 minutes depending on your muffin tin size. Once they're done, let them cool for around two to three minutes and they'll be super easy to pop out of the tin. Are you guys seeing this crispy crust? Oh my God. Now it's time for our taste test. This tasted exactly like regular pizza and I didn't even have to leave my house. Let's debate what the best pizza topping is in the comments and follow me for more yummy content. Hey everyone, today we're gonna make something that nobody seems to know how to make, but everyone seems to love, fattouche salad. The first and most important step is the night before you make it, take three pieces of pita bread, let it go stale, and then crunch them up and throw them in the bowl. Add about one head of romaine lettuce to the bowl. Next, we're gonna add about four cucumbers. Next up, one tomato and toss it in the bowl. One bunch scallions. One bunch parsley. Here's the most important part, the spices. First up, two tablespoons dried mint. One tablespoon of sumac teaspoon salt, one teaspoon olive oil red pepper. Now for the dressing, squeeze three lemons, quarter cup of vegetable oil. Add the dressing and give it a good toss. Try this salad with any of my other recipes. Hope you love it. Check out this absolutely delicious chocolate hummus. To our food processor, we're adding chickpeas, cocoa powder, of course, some tahini, maple syrup, some aquafaba, vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. And once everything's in, we're just pulsing till smooth. <laughs> the consistency here is outrageous. It's like hummus, but for dessert. Hey y'all, let's make a squash casserole. At one time in my life, I didn't care for squash casserole, but then I found this recipe and it was a game changer. Slice up about four or five large squash. One medium onion. Diced. Okay, y'all, now to a pan, add one stick of butter. Salt and pepper your squash to taste. You can also use chicken bouillon in the place of your salt. This is what I do. Now just saute your squash and onions and your butter. Okay, you wanna cook your squash until it's soft but not mushy and your onion should be translucent. All right, now let's assemble. To your squash and onions, add one can of cream of chicken. Eight ounces of sour cream. One cup of shredded cheese. Mix that together and set aside. Now you'll need one box of stove top, stuffing mix, chicken flavor, and one stick of butter. Okay, melt your stick of butter and pour it into your stove top mix. Okay, now add half this into the squash mixture and save the other half of your topping. Mix it in. Okay, y'all, now put it in a 9 by 13 top with just a little more cheese and then add your stove top to the top. Now bake it 350. And here it is. This is a family favorite. Crisp at 425 degrees until the cheese is nicely melted. Top with some cilantro and voila. If you guys have never had a quiche that wowed you, you should definitely try this one because it will change your mind.
And it's so easy. Whisk together your eggs, cream, milk, cayenne pepper, salt, and black pepper. Cut some asparagus into bite size, leave some long. Saute just for a couple of minutes. Bite size asparagus goes into your egg mixture with some cheddar cheese and a caramelized onion. Pop that into your pie crust, crumble your goat cheese on top, top with asparagus spears, guys, into your oven for about 45 minutes. It is so easy. Enjoy. These low carb spicy salmon poppers are dairy free, paleo, whole 30 compliant, and take just 30 minutes to make. To make them in a mixing bowl, add canned salmon, eggs, finely ground pork rinds, chopped jalapeno, mayonnaise, and spices, and mix that together using an electric mixer. Form the mixture into 24 equal sized balls and gently press each of those flat. Heat some avocado oil in a pan over medium heat and then cook the poppers about four to six at a time. Cook them about four to five minutes on one side, flip, and then about four to five additional minutes on the other side. Set the poppers aside and whip together some lemon dill ale before serving the poppers with the aioli drizzled on top and then garnished with fresh dill and lemon slices.